I'd like to open the um, Deerfield Planning Board meeting uh, September 14th, seven o'clock. And according to our uh, governor's order of March 12th, 2020, um, we can do this virtually over the Zoom and we meet the open meeting laws. So hopefully everybody got that message and everybody who wanted to join us is joining us. This, the agenda, this yeah. is recorded as well. So we want to announce that it's recorded. And it's being recorded as well. The agenda for this evening is uh, identify board members in attendance, review mail, uh, review minutes if they're available, um, public comment is not written down, but we always have that at the beginning. And then we have two old businesses. One is the marijuana bylaw amendment, a proposed marijuana bylaw amendment, and the other is the proposed flood, floodplain bylaw amendment. Then we have some new business, which includes Deerfield for Responsible Development is gonna propose a bylaw change. There is Merrigan Way layout review and a possible a &R for the Oxford property. Uh, then we're going to schedule a public hearing for the remand order from the land court in the South Deerfield DG Series LLC proceeding. Then we'll take up any other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of the meeting. We'll set a date for the next meeting and we'll adjourn. Planning board members, anything else to add? So let's start with a roll call. Um, so as, as we now know, virtually we have to... Um, Take a roll call at the beginning if you say your complete name and then throughout the proceedings if there's votes or any time you're going to speak if you could at least like say your first name at least and um and and let us know who's talking so um i'm john wait the chair of the planning board and i i think if i go um i'm going to go according to my screen here so uh, uh max are you there present if you could state your full name okay max antes i'm here Anna Lee. Anna Lee Wolf Cool present. Rachel. Rachel Blaine present. Anne Mary. Anne Mary Cloutier present. Denise. Denise Mason present. And uh, Paul Alice, is Paul there? All right, so we've got six out of our seven planning board members. Thank you all for participating tonight. Um, and uh, we, we have our our guest host is Jennifer uh, Gannett from the town. And uh, thank you very much, Jennifer, in advance for everything you're gonna do for us tonight. Welcome. Um, people from uh, non-planning board members, how we're gonna do this is everybody's um, should mute themselves. And uh, to do that, if you're on the phone, it's star six. Star six can mute yourself and you can unmute yourself uh, that way. Although Jennifer will also be muting you sometimes. Um, and then to raise your hand, it's star nine. So if you have a comment during a comment period, please press uh, star nine if you're on the phone. Otherwise, I think people who are on video have a hand raiser or you could do it physically and I'll try to see you as well. Um, all right, review mail. We received some mail uh, via uh, email this past week. I looked through it. It didn't look like there's anything that we really need to discuss. Did anybody else see anything that was pertinent? We get a lot of mail from other towns. That was Denise uh, asked that question earlier. And, um, you know, we, we, it's a courtesy and sometimes it's relevant, but sometimes it's, it's not. So, okay. Review minutes. So uh, just to recap, our August meeting, we did not have a a quorum, so we did not have a, a meeting. So the previous meeting to that was um, July 6th. And I will apologize, I haven't kept track. Does anybody know if we have minutes from July 6th? That's a negative. Um, it was my understanding that the minutes were created by watching the recordings of these. So I think that's a, I, um, I won't say it's a misunderstanding, it's a, it was a temporary measure. And I think we need to uh, actually figure this out. So for a long time, Paul took the, took the minutes pretty much by himself. I'd look at him, Rachel might look at him as vice chair. But then um, there was a couple meetings there when we started the Zooms, I think, when, um, I don't know if it was Jennifer or Sue kind of helped us out by doing the recordings. 
but then when you became clerk, I think the expectation was that you would start doing them, but that wasn't communicated well. I am so, opening up a Google Doc right now, and I will do that. And you, you can get the transcript, too, if Jen is willing to send along the transcript of this meeting, and that could be very helpful. You don't want okay, yeah. word for word, you know, you just want what's, you don't want what I'm saying to come up. Yeah. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. That's very helpful. Thanks. Yep. Another feature of that would be, it'd be great if um, you send them around close to the meeting. That was a thing that we kind of fell away from and then people can review them before the next meeting so that we walk into the next meeting both in remembering and also we can vote on them more quickly. So what should we do about July and potentially, I have to, so actually, Anne, Anne Mary, can we get together after this and go back and see where we left off with minutes? Maybe Jen can help us. I don't know if we have Junes or Mays or. Uh... Well, we have the recordings. Okay. So, you know, either Sue or Anne Mary can, you know, they can work together to you know, I, I think I also took notes, but I don't want to commit to that before I find them. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think some might have been written up, but we just haven't approved them yet. So we just really have to go back and clean up. That's kind of an administrative thing. But, uh, but some of the issues we're talking about tonight, we actually talked about previously. So it's good to have minutes so that we know what we said Absolutely. earlier as well. All right. So we won't review minutes tonight, but let's put that as a high priority for our next, uh, our next meeting. Um, okay, old business. So we've had uh, marijuana revised marijuana bylaws on our agenda for several meetings. Um, the way we left it um, last time was that there's there's one that we've been working on the planning board, and um, Chris Curtis has been helping us with it. And then there was another one that was submitted uh, by uh, a member of the public, and the select board actually I came to the select board. So I'm, I'm glad to see Trevor here tonight. Um, so I, I think the last thing that happened was the select board, uh, or there was kind of a subcommittee, and, and Mary, I think you were there. Um, could you, you want to give us a, a summary or an update? All right, so now I'm doing a couple of things at once. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, Trevor and Chris and I got together. Um, there were two, um, although I'm not sure what happened with plan, the other plan that we had looked at. Um, with uh, attorney Dick Evans, uh, that was not the one that we discussed. So we discussed the other one, which was very similar um, to what this board had talked about and looked at the maps. Uh, previously, there were only a couple of little changes um, that in order for me to take notes on, I, I can't talk about it and do that at the same time. So I would love it if it's okay if Chris or Trevor went into it a little bit. That way I can take down what's being said. That was good. I'd be happy to do that. Um, just unmuting myself here. Uh, so we did have a, a good discussion with uh, Trevor and Mary and, and I think had some consensus about some modest um, modifications to the proposed bylaw that we've been working on as a board for several months. and. Um, to quickly summarize uh, the main changes, which I sent out to you also by email, um, were that uh, we should allow marijuana retailers in the MO2 district um, because uh, there was a feeling that we didn't have enough um, area for retailers to consider locating um, and that that wouldn't be um, a conflict with the purposes of the MO2 district. Um, there was also a question of whether we should consider allowing <clears throat> marijuana retailers in the town center commercial zone. And that was agreed that we would uh, go back to um, the respective boards and have a discussion. Uh, the select board would talk about it and the planning board would talk about it and try to come to some consensus about that. So that's something to talk about tonight. And um, the third thing was that uh, there was a feeling that we should re reduce the size of the MO2 district that's closest to the schools, um, just kind of cutting out the section that's close to the schools. I sent to all of you um, just before the meeting 
um, a copy of the proposed marijuana um, overlay map, and hopefully you've seen that in your email, and that's something we can reference in the discussion tonight. And earlier today, I sent you the um, modest revisions to the bylaw, which included two things. Um, one was just an update to the um, references of the existing state statutes. Um, so those have been updated and are, are current now. And then again, the, um, the section that deals with um, allowing uh, mar marijuana retailers in the MO2 district, that's in the table and in the back part of the bylaw. Um, and that change, that proposed change is reflected. Um, both of those things are shown in a red font in the bylaw that I, I sent out to you earlier um, today. So um, that's a quick synopsis. Um, I don't know, Trevor, if you want to uh, jump in at this point. Sure. Um, yes, we, we had a very productive meeting. Um, and so in, in between that meeting and this one, um, uh, twice I, I brought this topic up to the select board um, to just kind of update them along with what, what we've been working on and what we would like to see happen. Um, and on Friday, I had a meeting with um, our town attorney, Lisa Mead, and Casey Warren, our town administrator, to uh, start working on the language. Um, she was going to go through that bylaw, um, the proposed bylaw for the planning board, and make some adjustments and kind of go through the language to make sure it's all um, appropriate. Uh, and then, you know, I guess the couple of things that we wanted to talk about a little bit was does it make sense to have the, um, you know, retail in the center of town um, looking at, and then to look at, at the 2000 foot buffer, because I think right now that 2000 foot buffer would exclude anything from downtown because we, from what we understand is Deerfield Nationals will be putting a cultivation building next to like right across the street from Yankee Candle. And that kind of pushes everything kind of to the left and towards the center of town. And I think, you know, just talking with other people about that, that 2000 foot buffer, I think was something that came up four or five years ago when medical marijuana was coming to town. We had talked about, um, I think that's where that came up with. And so we were trying to figure out, is that still a realistic uh, buffer that needs to happen or or should we pair that back a little bit, allow ourselves some uh, capabilities to do marijuana overlay, um, marijuana retail in the center of town? And, and maybe there is no spot that makes it in the center of town. We just didn't want to exclude it. You know, looking at what Northampton did, they, you know, they put it at the end of town and, and they, they really reap no economic development from it. So everybody comes into the edge of town, grabs their whatever they're going to get, hops on the highway and leaves. So um, we thought, well, and maybe it might be worth in the future. Um, we don't have any proposals or anything like that, but it might be a, there might be a spot in town where we thought it might make sense with um, the way things are moving, but, you know, uh, there, there's no real hard, fast thing we need to move on that. Um, it's, and, and so the other option is to kind of, with taking out uh, any cultivation um, in the RA district, we're leaving one, you know, one spot kind of hanging out there with no, no real um, zone around it. And we felt like it, um, where we do, we agree with the planning board, we would like to kind of limit um, cultivation. Uh, because I agree with John Wade, that it, it really is, tends to be more of an industrial kind of thing and not so much a farmer thing. Um, but we would like to um, create a zone around the existing uh, facility and maybe some other parcels in there in case there is anything else around that area that would like to do that and, uh, and still adjust the, um, you know, still allowing manufacturing with our current, um, current cultivators. Um, and that, that's a, a topic that I, I brought up with Lisa Mead. And, and so she's working on that language and, and I still need to come kind of get her a map of where that would work. This was just last Friday and I haven't really had a time to, to dig back in that. So there's still work that we need to do as a board, the select board end, and, you know, just grateful to talk with you about, you know, what we might be able to accomplish together.
was my mic going that whole time, I hope? Yeah, yeah, no, that was good. Then. Thanks, Trevor. <laughs> Just it sure. yeah. So this is Emily. What are we looking then to try to accomplish tonight in relation to this? So we want to... Um, oh. If I would just continue, I just the only thing I would say was that my only point was just to kind of really touch base back again with with this board and, and tell you kind of how our meeting went, um, that we made great headway, uh, see if you had any input, anything else you'd like to change. And then, you know, we would go back and still work on our stuff at our board and hopefully have another meeting in the future here and maybe get a public hearing together for a, a unified front to the town on a, on a bylaw. But that's all. So maybe my take is a little different, but this is the planning board is going to wants to recommend a revised zoning bylaw for the marijuana district. And um, I'm sorry, I missed that a bit. The, the, the planning board is in the, pro we're in the process to, of uh, recommending, we want to recommend a revised marijuana bylaw to the town. Yep. Um, and then the select board got involved. And so they're, con they're contributing some information to it. Um, yes. There's a little different maybe than what you said, Trevor, where are, are, you, are you planning, is the select board planning on moving a bylaw forward? I assumed we were hopefully, uh, my, my thought was that we would, w I was hoping that we could work together as two boards to put, put forward one bylaw to the town. And, and that's, that's, that's what I was hoping to get from the planning board. Good, that's, that's, that's what, yeah, I think that's what we would all. Yeah, I don't want to put two, I, I, yeah, no interest in that at all. All right, so, um, so you know, one of the things just for, especially for, um, some of the newer board members is that we wanted to get away from, uh, we, we had written the original bylaw says that a lot of the RA district is eligible to cultivate. Um, oh, as, yeah. as Trevor said that it's really now we know cultivation is really done in the whole in, RA district. Yes. Is more commercial and industrial. So, so we want to have a zone for that. And then I think one of the big other issues is um, the production. Um, there's, there's a proponent who wants to add, um, and production is the taken, the, or it's called product manufacturer, it wants to take the marijuana and make it into marijuana infused products in a production facility. And um, right now that's not allowed in, in most districts. Um, so we want to kind of maybe give a little more flexibility to that, but, but not necessarily in the RA district. So, um, so where does the M... So the marijuana overlay two, I, I see that big purple one, um, but I'm not sure where it ends at the northern end there. Ty, Trevor, can you help me with that one? Sure. Um, do, would you like me to share my screen or? Yeah, or give us some boundary markers there. I, I see it's um. Sure. Um, you know, it's on both sides of five and ten. Yes, uh, go back to this and see if I can do this here. Um, the Channing Beat location is, is part of that? Yes, it is. Um, so if you can see here, it's blown up a little bit on the left-hand side. Um, yeah. So it kind of about picks up about where the fire department is. Okay. And kind of moves forward. And there's a little section kind of you see here on my mouse is that that we believe would be the new proposed park. And I think we are gonna try and you know, peel some of that back out and, and just not allow anything kind of near frontier, you know, maybe yeah. we pick it up over here again. Right. Um, just take so the whole chunk out. Yeah, yeah. we take, take that, that whole, whole chunk out. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, whole corner true. right here. Yeah. That we, we would yeah. remove yeah. that. Yeah. And, um, and then, so this, I think that this map was from uh, FERCOG. Uh, this was, you know, I'd asked for our zoning map and, and they had sent this Ryan had sent this down and, it, and I think it had, so this was maybe in discussion with the planning board. This is kind of the thought that was going forward on this plan. And this would kind of come up to, uh, God, it's hard to, it's hard to tell. It looks like this is the, uh, trying to think of where the roads are here again. Let me go to the bigger Yeah, one. that's what's kind of hard to see. If I can jump in for just a second. This is the same map that we've discussed with the planning board. Um, and the proposed boundaries of these um, M02 and M01 overlays are are the existing zoning districts. So if you're wondering what the boundaries oh, are, thank the you. Existing zoning districts that underlie those. All right. In the case of the purple that you're looking at, it's the industrial zoning district boundary, 
and FERCOG did this map for us, but it was based on the map that, that I created and, and discussed with the planning board previously. Hmm. Thank you, Chris. All right, so it, uh, so it goes up five and 10 to Mill Village and then around there and then C2 mm -hmm. continues. So then it goes back to MO1. Yep. All right. So, so this is just, I think much more, you know, yeah. more, I guess you'd say more restricted than the previous maps have been. Yes. Question. Yep. Rachel. You want to have a question? Oh, I had a question about the, um, so when in Chris, thank you. <laughs> Put my <laughs> hand down. When um, Chris um, sent us, are we, we, we're talking about three things as far as I can tell. One is the retail in the downtown. Mm -hmm. One is changing the um, MO2. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the third is changing the, the um, use table for, or creating, I, I'm not, I'm not totally, I mean, this is not jiving with what Chris sent us earlier. I'm just, um, I, I, I want to know what we're really looking at. These feel like a, all disparate concerns, <laughs> kind of go at one at, the, at a time. Like, sure. I'm very happy with the, the change if we are moving forward with this park, which seems like a very cool idea, and I'm not, you know, um, I get that. So that's good. Um, Town center is a discussion that we've had and I'm happy to have it again. Cause I, I mean, I think it's worth thinking about. I, I, I hear you on, uh, you know, taking notes from Northampton's um, experience with um, moving their retail to the edge of town as opposed to in town. Mm -hmm. um, but the third one, I'm just not clear. Is that what, is that really about the changing the, our, our map? To reduce, um, uh, to remove um, all RA, just one of them. Oh. Well, if as a, a cultivator possible, well, just uh, yes, it w it would be to remove all of the RA. Okay. Um, it, at least from what we were had been discussing, is to remove all the RA except for um, there's another uh, map that was proposed by uh, by another another person looking at this to, to because it leaves that one facility out on as a grandfathered you know it is, a, a, it a is. Project, so, project and actually then it gives them a, a kind of an edge because they're there yeah uh, it also gives us an opportunity which i think is what you were pointing to t just a moment ago it gives us an opportunity to make uh, a, another overlay or whatever so mm -hmm. that we have a different set of rules for that particular um yeah I, we were we were thinking of proposing, and I hadn't done that yet. We looked at one option, but just to kind of group a, a zone around that so it was not just kind of left out there in the middle of nowhere. And then, um, and that was pretty much it. And just kind of removing all, the RA district pretty much in a whole. Um, of course, we, there's still that area up by the train station, which was still an available overlay spot uh, if anybody wanted to do something up there. It's more industrial up there. So I thought the map that you guys, uh, you know, put together was, was great. Um, it, it really kind of brought in part of five and ten, and it just look, looks great to the to the select board. Um, so the and then for for us was kind of that two thousand foot buffer. Are we really limiting ourselves, and what are we trying to achieve with that? Should we, you know, I think there's five hundred for schools, and that's in the state laws. Is two thousand really something that makes sense to us and, and would block out our center of town and I'm not sure that helps us at all for any reason but, but I don't know what the unintended consequences are of changing that if anyone else has any two cents on that so I'll, I'll quiet down now. Trevor I wanted to respond if I could to the buffer question um, which we had discussed a little bit before uh, I think that 2,000 foot buffer comes from the town's previous um, marijuana zoning bylaw and I don't know what the origins of that are but I can tell you that we've been working on this new bylaw based on a model bylaw that was produced by a group of planners from the Pioneer Valley 
And in that model bylaw, the proposed buffer is 300 feet um, between retailers. So um, I would offer that it might be reasonable to consider a buffer that's smaller and the 300 buffer um, is, is the number that's in the model bylaw. Mm. And I wasn't sure if there was a need for the state, you know, that there was a 500 one, I think, between schools and or where children con. Right. And, and we reflect okay. that in the bylaws. So you know, 500 even. Yeah. So then the 500 foot buffer becomes the more limiting factor for the town center because the elementary school is fairly close to the town center. So yeah portions would probably be excluded, but some portions of the town center district, the, the C1 district, yep. potentially accommodate retailers. In okay. That. Yeah. yeah. So does anybody else, any other planning board members? I, I don't know where that 2000 came from and I'm happy with a 300. I mean, it doesn't make, I think that's more of a, what the market can bear kind of issue than what us putting restrictions on it. Right. Thank you. We may have put that to keep it out of the town center. <laughs> I think originally, yeah. When I had had that discussion with others, they had thought, you know, four or five years ago, it was kind of something everybody didn't know what we were doing. And they right. thought 2,000 feet. So yeah. just to protect everybody. But we're not we're necessarily doing. moving to the town center um, with this. Because right. we were looking at it, quite honestly, more right. like uh, adult entertainment and that kind of you know, because it is an adult only event and that yes, you yeah. have a, a liquor store right downtown um, and it does draw people into the center of town. So I, I get that. I, I hear Trevor's point um, coming through loud and clear. I just know that that's why that's mm -hmm. a lot of what we were looking at. We were, sure. we, but this was back when we thought that that marijuana was going to be really groovy for farmers and they're going to have yeah. a cash crop and yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that all the, you know, the, the um, surveillance that was necessary, if you'll remember, that was one of mm -hmm. our major concerns was that there was going to be a proximity to, you know, not make it complicated for our police force to uh, do their pass bys that, that like we didn't look at the um, West Deerfield train area, that industrial, which is a, a great zone, but it does mm -hmm. put an extra um, route okay detail for our, our police to, um, you know, have that concern. And that was more of a concern, I think, for us at that point. Now that yep. we see marijuana develop, maybe we have a different perspective. I don't know. But yep. um, that was certainly part of our discussion in the early, early days uh, at, when we were back when we were really looking at it no. um, for medical. Yep. Um, Chris? I have somebody. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. I'm going to unmute you. Oh, this someone not someone not on the planning board. Uh, I'm not sure. It's a six six five seven eight seven six. Are you on the? No, it's that's Max. Yeah. Oh. Yes, this is this is Bruce St. Peters. Oh, Hi, Bruce. all right. Go ahead, Bruce. Um, I I I um I don't know which um version of the uh, bylaw that you have done. The one I just downloaded today, or actually last month, was an update of two, uh, February 10th, 20. And uh, there was a, b a bunch of comments I had, but the, uh, the one, uh, one of them was uh, concerning the 2,000 feet. Um, and uh, part of that being with the uh, MO2 area up at the north end of town, uh, without uh, putting some language in, the same as the... Um, uh, Underneath, they're uh, using the borders, uh, boundaries of the town of Deerfield. That school that's on Montague might almost be within 2,000 feet uh, of the uh, MO2. Hmm. And so I would possibly say that maybe somewhere in that version there that you want to uh, add in that this, uh, these uh, dimensions and so forth uh, only per pertain to the boundaries within the town of Greenfield and don't go outside of that, such as we have run into right now and uh, is a uh, potential change uh, f uh, number four. Uh, I believe it is uh, 
Yeah, I think we added, Bruce, I think we oh, added I'm that. I'm sorry, number three, number yeah. three, yes. Yeah. Okay. We made that, we're making that change. Yes, and uh, I guess my other question is on number two. Uh, didn't the ZBA allow one within uh, um, from building to building rather than uh, from property line to property line last year? At at one what? What are you talking? What, what are you talking? Uh, th th uh, there's no marijuana establishment shall be established uh, located on a parcel within 500 feet to be measured in a straight line from the nearest point of property line in question to nearest point of property line. Wasn't there a huge discussion, discussion and that went to the ZBA last year and uh, uh, got approved uh, based on building to building? That was us. Yeah. That was us. Yeah, we talking yeah about. I think it was. So Chris, you know, can you... Um, Max, do you remember that? That was the... Um, wasn't that, that, was that relative to that, the Atlantic, Atlantic property? Yes. It was the yeah. Atlantic property to the... To the, the child, the day family the child care. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah. And uh, and also the, the new section four that uh, being contemplated, uh, they may may want to consider adding the uh, somewhere in there within the boundaries of the town of Deerfield also, because you could end up with a situation uh, right now up by Cheapside Bridge, as a matter of fact, where uh, that's in there and. Uh, uh, there's one in Greenfield and uh, on the other side, and uh, you can't put one in Deerfield because you run into the same scenario that we did last year on that uh, using the um, uh, boundary to boundary rather than uh, structure to structure. Of course, that school is moving. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, well, I understand, but you know, I just thought that was good. That's a tough call because, well, you know, we can make it, I think within the boundaries of Deerfield, yes, but. We can't make rules outside of Deerfield. Well, I know, but uh, that's what that's why number um, number three, uh, the one just above that, is uh, being changed within the uh, within the town of Deerfield because right. uh, because of that um, and Waitley approving one right next door within a couple hundred feet. There was a lot of discussion illegally is that he couldn't uh, get permits for it because. Uh, it was within uh, 2,000 feet of another uh, building, and uh, so, but th so that was one of the reasons that uh, um, that change is being brought forward uh, within the town of Deerfield on that uh, number three. So, Chris, are you there? Yes. And you, you have something to say. So, I think have we addressed this already? Uh, some uh, yeah. of these are. Thanks, Bruce. Okay. The 2,000 foot buffer, we did address um, the issue about within the town of Deerfield. That's come up multiple times and we and, and it is reflected in the new bylaw. The issue of um, not having the residential buffer apply um, outside of the town of Deerfield is a new issue entirely. And I guess I have a different perspective about that. I, I don't see why we would be less protective of residential uses in neighboring towns than we are of residential uses in Deerfield. Um, so um, I, I don't think it, it's appropriate to, to change that one to only within the town of Deerfield. Okay. Yeah. I think the yeah. The I thought maybe the question was in three location we talk about no marijuana retailer, but but should that be no marijuana establishment? Because um, I, I thought the point was if we wanted to put one up up in East Deerfield, a a a uh, production a, a cultivator up there, we don't want to do the. Yeah, we could change three to a broader definition of of marijuana uh, use or establishment. Yeah, I'm not sure why we. The other ones all say marijuana establishment. That one says marijuana retailer. I'm not sure that was, is on purpose yeah, or. That, that makes sense to me. Uh, I agree. I, I think that makes sense. 
Yeah, the others are all establishments. Yeah. yeah. And then and then we want to reduce that buffer anyway. So um to to three hundred or five hundred. Is that right? That was my suggestion. Yeah. Any opposition to that? Is there any what what three hundred five hundred? I mean, what is the no the three and, football, oh, five hundred football fields? My other question was, um, as far as retailers go, we still have in here that you can only have uh, a certain percentage of dispensaries as there are as liquor stores, right? Is that still That's somewhere? That's correct. Which basically means we can only have like two retailers, I think, right? That's correct. So that the spacing doesn't really matter to tell you, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Trevor, you're, uh, you're muted, Trevor. Yes, that's correct for the retailers right now. I think yeah. um, we probably would. I, we could change that in the in the future, but I think right now it makes sense to just yeah, kind of leave it at at two possibly. Right, if one's yeah. at the other end of town. Yeah. Yeah. So the buffer thing really is, isn't a big issue for no. retailers. So. No. All right. All right. So those are some good good changes. Yeah. All right. So I guess really. Um, uh, now I'm going to come back. I guess to Chris, our our procedure we. This is not a public hearing tonight, correct? Um, so we need to have a public hearing. But uh, I guess the question is: Should we wait and get a little more from the select board to see if uh, we want to refine that downtown thing? I guess. Yeah. yeah I, well, just before I uh, real quick, I, I would love to have you know just get the feedback from Lisa. I know she's working on that this week. Um, just kind of going over the language of the bylaw. Um, you know, talking about you know. Um, the manufacturing portion of it, just kind of see where all that lays out and then send it out to all of you. And then I'd love it if you, you know, wanted to have another meeting or a public hearing at some point. We're, we're hoping to have a town meeting. We're, we're shooting for the 22nd of October at this point right now. Um, I think that's what the lawyers could do. And so we're just figuring out all the logistics because we don't want it to get too late and we'll be outside trying to get it early enough in the day. And there's still daylight and puts some lights up and it's a, it's a orchestra but um so we're shooting for the 22nd of october for a special town meeting and then i'm hoping to get all of you as much info as i can out for you to review and decide you know if it's anything you want to take up or not well just even if we wanted to is it even feasible given the public hearing um notifications and everything um we we can do a public hearing the same night as <laughs> the town meeting if you wanted to but uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to put the pressure on. <laughs> yes, Jennifer. Not public meetings. We've had meetings before, but not public meetings the night of the... Um, Casey would like to say something and then Bruce also, so I don't know. Yeah. Zoom. Bruce, great. Casey, Casey, thanks. Thanks for being here. <laughs> so I did want to build on a couple of things that Trevor said. Um, there, when council reviewed the language, she found some definitions she, she suggested we refine. So I'd like to give her the chance to get some of that done because she's going to end up reviewing it anyway um, before you guys look at a version that we sort of tweaked with, with the intent of looking at of what, you had dis what you guys had discussed before, but looking at it as... Um, how practically can we try to, to get both committees to look at the same information? So that's one thing. There were some definitions that she thought needed to be cleaned up. Um, and I don't have my notes in front of me, so forgive me. I have two pages of notes. I just didn't bring them home with me. <laughs> um, the other thing was is making sure that we get this information out to you as soon as we can, because we do know that if you did want to participate by having a bylaw discussion on town meeting floor on October 22nd, then we would need to facilitate this relatively quickly in terms of marijuana. Can, can I ask that Lisa passes this along to Chris? Because we feel really strongly that Chris has mm -hmm. been managing those definitions beautifully. And um, we feel confident. I mean, I don't know. I feel confident that, sorry, John, everybody, that um, Chris has done actually already a very good job of cleaning it up. So if it's yet another level of cleanup, um, 
he'll be able to manage that? Can we, as opposed to bringing it to us? He's going to have to look at it anyway. And if she found flaws in his language, we better identify it now. Okay. Yeah. So, so I will send it to Chris as soon as I have it. When I send it to Trevor, I'll send it to Chris. Yeah. Um, but I'll... she would have to look at anything that was submitted. All right. Right. But so I guess I would, I, I would, well, my first instinct is not to be in favor of a public hearing prior to a town meeting. Um, so then I'm looking at, you know, we already have four planning board meetings in the next six weeks because of other issues. So for us to add another public hearing in October would be difficult, but potentially. Um, I think, I, I mean, one of the things that I'm going to suggest right now is that uh, October 22nd is close. Yeah. We've got a lot of things on our plate. Yeah. My suggestion is that we move forward the, the little steps that we don't need to move everything forward all at once. And I think that that might help us out, you know, um, in terms of the town and kind of softening the bulkhead, so to speak, or whatever that expression is, you know, kind of get people thinking about it and looking at it and listening and so that they understand where we're moving with this um, as a planning board, what kinds of concerns we have. Um, so that we don't feel like we have to make all of these changes all at once. I mean, wouldn't that be great if we came up with the perfect document? But um, I, I feel like if we keep, you know, modifying it, we're going to move in the right direction. We show a direction. Right. The only issue is if, if we wanted to, if it wasn't until spring, then if other people came forward with applications to put cultivation in RA districts, we would have to do a special permit review. Oh, I want, I want, I want the RA thing right away. I want that on the, I mean, personally, I think we can get, that's very important to me, as you know. I think we can get most of it done. I mean, it, provided you guys have the time, we'll, we'll do our best to get it, you know, all the information as fast as we can to you and, and, and mm -hmm. cross our fingers, you can get it done fast enough. But. All right. So with the, yeah, you know, with, again, with the two week uh, public hearing thing, we just have to set a date, uh, we'd have to set a date fairly quickly. All right. Really soon. All right. A joint. You mean okay. this is for a joint meeting too? Maybe a public hearing with with. Sure. The board. Yeah. yeah. So it might be Absolutely. on a Wednesday night too, which would loosen us. Mean that, by the way, we we have no lives anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> it would give us something to do on Wednesday night because um, all of our monies are taken up with planning board. Right. Sounds good. <laughs> I think the Celtics do play some Wednesday night games, but that's a whole other story. Oh, and so, some of us right. are really back at work. <laughs> um, well, thank you. John, right. has his um, hand again. You very much for listening tonight. And let, I want to ask, uh, I want to ask Attorney uh, Dubinder if you've been with us tonight. Um, do you have, are you here for this subject? Oh, you're on mute, John. There oh, you go. Uh, Sorry, I, I was for this subject. I was listening intentively. Oh, good. Someone was. So would you like to <laughs> say something? No, John, I'm, I'm in good shape. I'm listening. And I, 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 I know, I know what um, the select board are interested in doing. I think it makes sense to do it. We, I, I've told you before, I think uh, the original bylaws blanket allowance of cultivation in the RA district made no sense. Uh, your existing bylaw. I also think a prohibition, an absolute prohibition, without thinking through some other alternative, doesn't make any sense as well. And I think that's what Trevor and the select board are trying to do. And I'm comfortable with that. So I think it's a good right. exercise. Good. That's where I'm coming from. We appreciate that. All right. Anybody else have something on this topic? Uh, Jennifer, did you say Bruce had something else? Yes. Uh, Bruce St. Peter's again? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, going back to 4666, additional requirements, conditions. Um, the addi following additional requirements and conditions shall also apply to all ma um, marijuana establishments. Now, that does not include medical marijuana treatment centers, from what I understand. We're, we're, putting, them to, we're putting them together in this bylaw. Well, it, 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 in the definitions, it, it specifically excludes uh, uh, med, uh, medical marijuana treatment center from, as, uh, from marijuana establishment. 
Chris, if can you go you back to the definitions? Respond to that. I thought we were combining the two here. I don't know. I, I, Which section are you referring to? I'm sorry. I'm just reading the definition of marijuana exception. It re, uh, reads everything except a medical marijuana treatment center. I, th I think that's what, what uh, Lisa was looking at, kind of the, some of that definition of what a adult use marijuana facility will Because that, the well, way so I'm reading it right now. Kind of put that stuff together so it follows. Me. Yeah, that's going to be adjusted. Okay. And uh, the other thing is there is quite a lot of areas uh, that uh, I think maybe the uh, – Cloning should be adding it in, into a lot of these areas because that is a uh, uh, way of creating marijuana at this point in time. So some of your uh, definitions for propagation, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing, things like that, you might want to consider adding the word cloning in there. And the last comment was going back to the 2,000 feet, and I realized you changed it to uh, 500 or 300 or whatever. The previous wording was uh, measured from facility to facility, not from property line to property line. Mm -hmm. So if you had a large property, uh, you could actually turn around and that it could end up uh, being a thousand feet if you had a long skinny property. So you may want to change that back to facility to facility. Mm -hmm. And that, no. that, was the, that was my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks. Uh Just quickly, I think we're trying to use the words that um, the state uses also as far as the types of marijuana businesses. So we, I wouldn't want to create our own. But um, And that thing about the long property, I'm not sure, does it matter to anybody? I mean, the last time it was built, you know, I think that's what you would work on building to building in that, in that review of that last facility. Uh, okay. I have another hand up. Yep. Sorry, Emily. Yes. Um, Real hand. <laughs> just, just thinking back to the um, committee meeting and hoping that since we're on a type time schedule. Are, were there any in the informal of the, those discussions, are there any areas where it seemed like there was real disagreement between the select board and the planning board so that we could at least um, smooth that out now? Or do we seem like we're on the same wavelength with the select board on most of this or all of this? Town center. <laughs> I think just, yeah, I mean, maybe that area and, and that we don't really have, have a huge dog in the fight on that at all. We just wanted to make sure that we were being smart about economic development and could, you know, could we capitalize on, on that? Uh, but we have no proposals in, in place right now, but just some, you know, just some thoughts to make sure we had ability there, but I was certainly open to listen on that. And um, I guess the only other one was just kind of figuring out, I just wanted to make sure we figured out and didn't leave that one facility kind of hanging out there with no zone around it. Um, but other than that, I think we're we're on board with all all of this. So, mm -hmm. you also uh, do you do you want to insert that you could add cultivation to um, then you could add processing to cultivation. I'm sorry, that froze a second. Add cultivation where? Add um, the processing to where to the sites where there's cultivation. Yes, I mean that that would be that that would be a, a huge interest to the select board monetarily. Yeah, without creating a you know, any impact really, other than no bigger footprint or anything like that. So the, the, the big question there is the, the existing um, one that's been approved for cultivation on Mill Village Road has asked to also be allowed to do some product manufacturing and that's right. not allowed. So the question is whether we want to allow it there. And I think th then the follow-up question is, would that be kind of spot zoning and is that does it matter if it's spot zoning or not? Because it seems like it would be. Yeah, and I think that's why I was thinking maybe we would, you know, um, talking with Lisa, our attorney, about it was the language that we put it in, maybe draw a little bit bigger map around it. Um, 
I, I would want to do it so that while well, she talked a lot about zone, about um, solar and you know how we how we zone for solar and there's 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 all these spots kind of all over town and um, broken up here and there and so it was it was it was a language definition that she was going to work on I think and so I was anxious to hear how that played out and could we could we work on something like that so it did you know it wasn't spot zoning it was more thoughtful and um, you know li limiting as well and what we would we wouldn't want again I agree with the plain board I don't want to see you know, marijuana all over our, our, our excellent farmland. I mean, we've got, we've got great farmland here, so. All right, so at this point, I guess we're not ready to, I almost would like to set a public hearing date if we thought something would be ready, because that's actually something we usually need to vote on. So we're together, we could vote on it. And then if it doesn't happen, I guess we could cancel it. So I, I wanna kind of propose that. Um, Hmm. I, and I would just as soon see it at the select board date. Sure. Because I think in, in a funny kind of way, you need to host this. Um, sure. You've been a little bit more front and center. Yep. Um, I, and, I, uh, I would argue with that, but... Um, <laughs> you have done a lot of work, John. Well, we, we started... <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but I just feel like, <laughs> you know, in terms of moving the dial on this, yep. we All have... Right. Uh, the only thing we've really pushed or yeah. I, I think we pushed for is to close down the RA. That was, that was a old yeah. thing that we were working on. Yep. Yep. What, what do you think, Casey? Do you, do you have a date in mind with the 30th work for us? And still give well, us two weeks? Uh, well, we would need September. at least, we would need at least two weeks. Uh, so I'd rather have like October 7th. That's the next oh, okay. October 7th. What he said. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Not knowing if that's going to be the uh, right after our October fifth meeting. Well, that's uh, we'll <laughs> shoot for that. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> Does any yeah planning October seventh is actually a select board meeting, so we could we have one hearing we could do, but we could try to do this one too. So did you say? I think the other one right now is short. Did you say October 7th or was it September 30th? October 7th, please. We're, okay. we're, wait, we're, waiting, for, well, we're waiting for a motion from a, a planning board member. Does that, right. does that work I for- I move that we um, open a public hearing with, in, with the select board uh, at a seven o'clock meeting on October 7th um, to address bylaw changes to uh, marijuana regulations for zoning for, for a, i think for a proposed revised marijuana bylaw for a proposed marijuana bylaw John. second that's denise. Rachel Blaine. great all right and denise mason um second it any discussion so let me go around and um and if you just say your name and uh if you vote in favor of having the public hearing on october 7th max casey um did you say yeah, I just got sorry the, the meeting starts so at, what I'm forgetting what you're talking about Jen oh there was yeah. a question that had to do with another bylaw change and Jen just texted me <laughs> well I was also questioning the time I I did text you that but I was also questioning the time because the select board meetings typically start at six o'clock and would we six. just say yeah, yeah. So what time would you like us to do this? We could do it at seven if you wanted. Because we have other business we can do. Seven. <laughs> seven. Seven. Okay. All right. Okay. I know. I'm watching so Rachel's fingers. Like this. Oh. All right. So the motion is still <laughs> seven o'clock on the seventh. Um, uh, Max. With Max Antes, uh no. You you don't want to hold a public hearing. Well, I got the map at 6.59. Okay. okay. Uh, this map's new to me. I've not seen it before. All right. So you're not voting on the map, though. You're voting on a public hearing. Um, well, this but, isn't the planning board's plan. It's the select board's plan. Um, the select board should have the public hearing. Okay. That's, that's where I thought I've been having this discussion. This is really the plan we've been working on for... Right. 
six to eight months. Um, Chris and Trevor. Well, Chris we haven't has seen it. Oh, I, I've seen it three or four times. I think. Well, it's. I think we've had it at many meetings. This map showed up at six fifty nine in my email. Okay. All right, Max. No, Annalie. Annalie both cool. Yes. Denise. Denise Mason. Yes. Uh, Rachel. Rachel Blaine. Yes. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, yes. And John Waite, yes. So we get five yeses uh, and, and one no. All right. Um, and Max, I, I mean, we hear you. I, I, usually I, I ask if there's any discussion and that when that could have come up instead of during the vote, but I, we appreciate. And I'm on the planning board and I saw it. So it's yeah. not like no one on the planning board has seen it and it's been emailed out a couple of times. Yeah. So, and we might still discuss it even before that public hearing, but now we have a public hearing set for it. So that's great. We have two meetings before then. Yeah. All right, Chris, are you set to, um, to, to take it when Lisa Mead gets back to us? Yes, I will. Uh, I'll make all the changes that we talked about tonight and send you out a revised draft and I'll take into account anything I get from Lisa in, in that. All right, and we always appreciate when you do put the changes in red so that we can visit, you know, see it. And I know that's why I feel comfortable with what we're looking at because we've seen the changes in red and we approved them and now it's not in red anymore. So it's coming along. Good. I, th I think Lisa was going to redline it too so everybody could see what was changing. Yeah. Good. Thanks very much. Thank you all very much. Appreciate you being here. Um, all right, the next agenda item is the floodplain, uh, proposed floodplain bylaw amendment. We discussed, uh, oh, we've discussed this a lot of times and back in July, I know we, uh, we had a public hearing on it. And, um, but I don't have the minutes. So how did we end up that July meeting and where are we at today? Chris, can you, um, Give us an update. You know, I don't have the minutes either. I thought we, I thought the board had voted um, in July um, to send this to town meeting. That was my election. I believe we did. I believe we did too. So, okay. So this is just on there as a carryover um, for no apparent reason. All right. The tough thing was that we had no way of making a public hearing because there's no a butters list. Mm. Right, but it was published. Uh, it was a public hearing. Yeah, yeah, it was a public hearing. All right, so that will go. Um, that will. So that's another one, uh, Trevor, and, and to go on to the um, town meeting. So we'll get you the minutes and the our vote from the July meeting. Right. Hey, Dylan, this is Denise. There were just some changes that were made during our meeting. I think under prohibited uses, and we moved a few things. So there were some changes that were made. So if we look back at the minutes, that should reflect that. And who is our, um, I don't know, we don't have a, a lawyer necessarily on here, but I know that if a public hearing, if there's minor changes made, you don't, you don't have to have another public hearing. If there's major oh. ones, then we usually have another public hearing. But I, I don't recall they were major changes. No, I think they were agreed upon, but yeah. I just, I haven't seen a new, we don't have a new copy of the, that yeah. reflects the changes that were made. That's all. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, I will send you out um, a final copy then. And, and Denise, if you wouldn't mind just sending me what notes you have about those changes, just so I can make sure that I've got everything. Sure. Denise, will you send me a copy of those too? Uh, yes, I will. Thank you. Even if you wanted to take a picture with your phone and send them, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. And, then, um, and that's part of the minutes that we'll look at in Mary to okay. get recorded also. Yeah. Oh, look at that. We moved through that one. Um, So we have some uh, new business. 
And, um, oh, okay, good. Uh, this, this, unfortunately, because we didn't have a quorum last time, got kind of dropped a little bit. But so there's a, a group that has a proposed a bylaw change. Uh, imagine that, another bylaw change that we can consider because we need another meeting. Uh, <laughs> And so we have some folks from Deerfield for Responsible Development here with us tonight to, to give us a summary of it. And it was sent out, I sent it around to everybody. Uh, there, were, there were two documents, I believe. Um, and so I know Tolly and, and Debbie, who wants to um, give us an update, a summary of this one. Judith. Um, if, if I may, I'll start. Is that All right? Okay? If, yep, and if you can just, um, I, I will so introduce yourself then. I will. I'll do that yeah. for the benefit of other listeners, if that's yes. okay. Yeah, I'm Debbie Shriver. I live on Pocumtuck Drive, and I volunteer with Deerfield for Responsible Development. We're a grassroots group that's committed to fostering local business uh, and in a diverse array of locally owned businesses to boost the local economy of Deerfield and to give a fair opportunity for our community to be both more sustainable and resilient. Uh, we know that uh, the planning board's been updating bylaws in connection with the municipal vulnerability program. And in fact, Deerfield for Responsible Development members met with Chris Curtis uh, a number of months ago uh, to review and comment a bit on the proposed floodplain bylaw uh, at an earlier stage in its evolution. The, the, the bylaws that we are proposing this evening are additions to our existing bylaws, and they are about formula-based businesses. They could complement the work that the planning board is doing with the resilient communities efforts, or they could be independent of that or stand apart from that. In any case, these bylaw additions could be part of the town's greater strategy for economic sustainability, for maintaining the appearance of the historic Deerfield Corridor, and they would be in alignment to help uh, with the uh, town's many unique businesses. So we've come to seek your support for these bylaws at a future town meeting. And we request that you schedule a public hearing on the proposed bylaw additions. Uh, one, one of the bylaws defines formula-based businesses and then the other is a bylaw amendment that would apply the definition in the existing table of uses for the town. Um, my colleague, uh, Judy Kundal, will further talk about the bylaws and their development. We worked with uh, Jeff Lacey, who is a um, very experienced land use planner in the area. And these were also reviewed by Bob Ritchie, who is a highly qualified legal counsel um, and the bylaws have been applied in the town of Dennis. Judy will tell us more about that. And uh, to some extent there, Debbie, you've stolen my thunder. I'm Judy Kundal, <laughs> Lee Road, South Deerfield. Um, and I did want to explain that these have been carefully reviewed. They were drafted by uh, Jeff Lacey and Bob Ritchie, who used to work at, as an assistant attorney general reviewing zoning bylaws also reviewed them. And they, and as the definition notes, they are based very closely, patterned very closely on the bylaw that's been in existence in Dennis since 2007. If anybody is interested, I have a link to a discussion by the planner in Dennis to explain exactly how these bylaws work in the town. Um, the definition, as you will see, applies only to businesses that have uh, 10 or more existing formula-based locations, and then it applies to six criteria. So as the planner in Dennis explains, in order to re be removed from the definition, all a business needs to do is remove get below three of the um, of the qualifications for a formula based business like changing the signage changing the the exterior um, changing whether they use uniforms that kind of thing um, 
in Dennis, they were mostly concerned with things like Dunkin' Donuts and coffee shops and I guess a market, 7-Eleven, Christie's, that kind of thing. So it's a very useful discussion on how the, how the bylaw works in, in practicality. Um, I know there's been some concern that this is going to outright ban certain businesses from town, and it will not do that. It'll just make any business that wants to come to town sort of modify its appearance to fit more with what Deerfield would like to look like. I, I know there's been some discussion about whether Deerfield wants 5 and 10 to look like Route 9 and Hadley, and I think many Deerfield residents would not like to see that happen, and this kind of a bylaw would help prevent that. So that's, and, and again, as Debbie said, we're looking forward to having this set for a public hearing where more discussion could take place. Could you just say what the bylaw is again now? I, I got, are you looking at, um, there are two I, parts. I have, some I have some drafts, yeah. Yeah, the one part is the definition yeah. of the formula-based business. And you can see that it's, um, it, ha it has to have one of 10 businesses and, uh, and, the, and there are six standards for the formula. So for example, uh, Bueno Isano coming to town, they would not qualify as a formula-based business because there are not 10 branches of that location. You'd need 10. Right. And if you did have 10, you just have to change the sign, the facade. Um, as the dentist planner discusses, uniforms are one thing that's easy uh, to change because not a lot of places require uniforms. The other piece of the, of the uh, bylaw is um, the change in the table of uses to add a footnote to, um, to section 11 footnote as to which zones the formula-based business definition would apply. I don't know if you can see that part of it. And the, and the footnote would be that within all C1, C2 commercial zoning districts, excepting the most northerly C2 district, formula-based businesses are prohibited. Right. That would be the footnote. Right. Okay. So, so that's like the main thing. And then you go and you find out what the definition of formula-based businesses is and you can figure it out. That's right. Right. Yes, Debbie, something else? No, I'm not, nothing else. I've just oh. not. I thought you have your hand up. You're, uh, no, I'm sorry. I was propping my chin. No, I mean, there's a hand on your on your window here in my. There is. Yeah. I haven't raised it. I'm sorry. Okay. I thought maybe you're clapping or something instead. No, I had <laughs> raised it initially before I spoke, but you know how they go away. After... Yeah, now it's gone away. Okay. No. <laughs> so. Uh, All right. So thank you very much. Um, I'll just let some planning board members know that this came up. I don't know if it's Rachel, it was a long time ago. Were you on the board when this came up? Yeah, so I remember John Baronis and I and a couple others uh, discussed it. It was a little called something else, but I think it was still formula based something was what we were using. I, I and, do remember when it came up as an issue relative to um, fast food. Yeah, yeah. So um, so I, I can't recall exactly where it went, but it obviously didn't get into the bylaws at that time so so now it's so now it's back here um so we can certainly schedule a uh a, a public hearing but i'd like to see what other planning board members um uh, do you have any questions i have a reflection yes <laughs> which is that um one of the reflections um that i've had over the years on of my service on this board is that there was a very distinct dis di mm, when Cumberland Farms came to us with their plan, they were available to changes. Now we may not have asked as many changes as we, you know, in hindsight, would we have asked for more changes? Um, but at the time, um, 
they felt, I felt that they were receptive to whatever it was that we were working, how they, they, they were interested in, in becoming more of a Deerfield business than I was, I was expecting. Um, so this is kind of interesting relative to that um, with regard to the kinds of um, changes that a formula-based business would make. That's all. It's just interesting for us, given that we've had two formula-based um, businesses that have had application before us in the last five years. So I'm curious, Debbie or, or Judith or someone else, would you happen to know if Cumberland Farms, if this had been in effect three or four years ago, would they have been able to move uh, from one, you know, into the place they're in now? I'd have to look at what changes they've made um, for their standard, you know, formula. Yeah. Um, but it, all it would take would be eliminating three. As a matter of fact, I, I should probably send um, the link of the Dennis Planner discussion. They do mention Cumberland Farms and how, because a lot of the products sold in the store are Cumberland Farms branded, that that's one part of the formula that they wouldn't be able to change. But um, other parts, they, they could easily have changed. And I, and I would also say that um, recently I noticed a beautiful Dunkin' Donuts in the center of Haydenville. I Haydenville. Know. That yeah. was just going to bring that one up. Yeah. That Dunkin' Donuts must be available to this particular bylaw change because they um, have made in a variety of towns in Maine and on the Cape as well, significant right. changes where they do not look like everybody else's Dunkin' Donuts. And that's right. And, and Williamsburg does not have, that I could see when I looked at their bylaw, they do not have a, a formula-based I'm leaving. Oh, you're leaving? It took them over a year board to get there, Judy. I'm sorry? It took them over a year going through their zoning board to get to where you, to what you see, but it's actually one of the busiest Dunkin' Donuts I've ever seen. I live up the street, so. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I, and I don't know how they got there because they don't have a formula-based business bylaw, but it's very, very attractive. It, it's Debbie Schreiber again. It gives yep, them- and Polly. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. No, you can go first. Go ahead, Debbie. No, I was just going to say, um, uh, that it gives these businesses an opportunity to really be a good neighbor and to, you know, to be welcomed into a community if they make a few adjustments that will allow them to be more responsive to the dominant uh, characteristics of the, of the town. And that's a kind of a, that's a kind of a nice thing to see for, um, for, for that, that neighborliness, and I think is, um, I just think it's also a good business practice. But, uh, but anyway, Tolly, you were going to say something? Yep, Tolly. Hi. Yeah. Hi, Tolly Stark. Um, I just wanted to um, point out that these, um, these bylaws specifically are looking at retail establishments and also restaurants. So um, there's nothing with these currently that would say um, apply necessarily to services like banks and or um, if something falls under more of a gas station um, that isn't considered retail. So these are more specific to um, retail and also restaurants. And it says that up in the, well, that's in the definitions, I guess. So. Right. And part of, part of why uh, Jeff Lacey suggested this kind of a bylaw is because um, the Deerfield bylaw has restrictions on fast food establishments, but there's no definition. So he thought that applying this would help provide a definition of a fast food establishment because it would fit within the formula-based formula business. Uh, Trevor. Um I'm very concerned about the bylaw as it relates to economic development. I get the um, I get the idea behind it, but I, I definitely think there needs to be some flexibility. I look at a a business like uh, the one I work for. We certainly have more than ten locations, and you know we we care a lot about our brand and our presentation. So I'm just curious, how would that affect 
a retailer such as, you know, if Palo Windows wanted to move into Deerfield and open up a retail shop, how does that affect us and our branding? Um, I just want to be careful. I understand the intent and what we're trying to do, but we have to make sure, you know, this town will shrivel up and die without business. Um, we need economic development in this, this town. And I'm very concerned about, you know, how, how we want to, I like the idea of being able to be um, welcoming to businesses and, and very concerned about our character as well. So I, it just needs to strike a, a, a good balance between, you know, not being so um, unwelcoming and that you have to change your whole, you know, everything that we invest so much uh, as a company into our, our branding that, um, that we would, you know, that we wouldn't be recognizable. We have to make sure that we'd still have, you know, say just in Pella, for example, our Pella bullseye with our, you know, black lettering. It's it's very recognizable around the around the country. And I just think, um, um, I just want so to make sure that there is flexibility for businesses. Um, so I don't really know how they affect us. So that's all. Well, I think that I just heard something, but Judith, you want to respond to that? Is that what you're? Well, I mean, I, I'd have to go through. There's uh, six things that they could um, scratch off the list. Well, standardized menu <laughs> wouldn't apply to you. The trademark you would, you would, you just stated that you would want to keep. Standardized facade, maybe or maybe not. That might be something you'd you'd be willing to change. Um, mm -hmm. Standardized decor and color scheme used throughout the interior. Yes. Standardized uniform you wouldn't use, so that wouldn't apply. And then standardized signage. So you know you'd go through that list and what things are they willing to change um, to fit or to remove be removed from that definition. And once you're removed from the definition, then you're just within the normal retail category. Um, you're no longer a formula based. Dip, uh, so meaning we wouldn't be able to have our standardized signage throughout the building and on the, on the building itself. Oh, you could itself. have your standardized signage um, if you removed enough of the other uh, criteria so that you were below, you know, so you didn't check all six boxes. Um, so you can check five. So you'd but have your six. signage. Um, let's see. Let me read this. Three or more. Yeah. So you'd have to remove three. You could remove. Yeah. Um, it just seems a little bit difficult. Well, the other question that came up for, was, you know, for a for looking at economic development for a town that we'd want to limit, you know, what we're doing. You know, people invest a lot of money in their in their branding, um, and it takes years and years and years to to develop that recognition. Um, it's very hard to to kind of deny that to to um, you know to, to a business that wants to come to to Deerfield. I think I just want to clarify that um, you mentioned, I think Tolly mentioned that this is for retail. So right. not, not manufacturing or production or, um, and so I think that's the first well, thing is, is it retail or not retail? We, you know, I just think of our company, we are a retailer of, of windows. The, um, so, and then getting back to economic development, Trevor, we could have a long discussion about what kind of economic development because right. it, it, all economic development is not the same. And, Retail, I think, is something that towns, you know, you want to have a balance of manufacturing, retail, service, you know, residential. And, and again, I think Deerfield has done a terrific job and we want to continue that. Um, but as some people know, some towns have gone overboard and have, you know, maybe, maybe too much retail and not enough production and other things. So, you know, I, I think that's something we can look at here. Um, so. I guess I also think that I wonder how effective uh, bylaws like this will be um, a year or two <clears throat> down the road if the business decides to change their mind and to go with their original branding. So from enforcement, you're saying? Right. And, yeah. you know, do we want to be in the business of enforcement? Um, yeah. yeah. Hey, John, can I be recognized? Sorry, yep, I gotta keep looking at this Hi. Okay. <laughs> Polly Stark again. Um, yeah, just wanted to acknowledge what Trevor said and um, his concerns with that. I think that that's important and it's definitely um, should be a consideration. 
Um, I do think that these bylaws are there um, to help us have a real ability to plan and create the character of the town that we want. And I also think it would actually bring more of an economic development because we're going to bring in the more quality businesses that will really invest in our community that would be willing to make these changes because they want to be here and they see the value. The ones that are less likely to pull out if things don't seem to be going their way and leaving us with another empty building with big, bright, you know, neon signs or whatever else. <laughs> so I feel like it actually will allow us to maybe attract other business that is looking um, to be more kind of in that venue. And I feel like it's gonna bring developers around that are willing to put in the work to do that. So I feel like it's allowing us to just find um, a more sustainable economic investors for businesses for our community, as opposed to some run the mill ones that could leave it or take it and not really care about Deerfield. Bruce did, Bruce, did you have a question or comment? Uh, yes, uh, just a little input. Um, thank you. Um, I have to agree with Trevor. I'm a little concerned on this. Uh, mm -hmm. First, I guess I would like to know, uh, have any small towns have considered this? You have a, uh, you're using uh, um, Dennis as an example, and they have assessed value of almost $7.5 billion, whereas uh, Deerfield has an assessed value of $751 million. So you have a, a multiple of 10. They don't need businesses. They can pick and choose. Um, furthermore, I think the uh, planning board and the zoning that exists and the ZBA have done a very good job of vetting any businesses that want to come in. Uh, and a good example is used in Cumberland Farms. Uh, they uh, negotiated changes uh, within, still keeping within the uh, uh, existing uh, laws and uh, rules and regulations, and I don't think we need another la layer of uh, uh, bureaucracy added on to what's already here. And, uh, uh, you know, these businesses spent many years, um, you know, this attitude that, well, they're going to come and go. Well, you know, you have that right now. Whether you like it or not, Yankee Candle is, has no more, no uh, direct uh, uh, loyalty to Deerfield than any other man. They are Newell brands now. They could care less. They can pick up and leave in a heartbeat. Uh, the the, the uh, truck depot north of here, that isn't even owned by Yankee Candle or Newell brands. Uh, the uh, office building is not owned by Yankee Candle. Uh, you know, you keep restricting business and we're going to end up with this anti-business venue and instead of bringing businesses in, you're going to scare them away. I think, I, 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 I'm reiterating, I think there's a planning board right now and a zoning board is doing one hell of a job, and I don't think we need this other layer of bureaucracy. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Any other planning boards? Uh, do we want to move yeah. this to a public hearing? Wait, 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 wait. I have my hand up. Yep. Rachel, I have, I'm, this is Lily, but I had my hand up first, Lily. She did. <clears throat> so... Bruce, I totally appreciate the issue of um, more bureaucracy, but as one who is actually managing that bureaucracy, it is a heavy burden. And this may be the kind of, and I, I'm just, I mean, I'm just hearing this. I'm not, I'm not an advocate or I'm a proponent or even a detractor, but I'm just saying that as a tool, it may be a very helpful tool. We don't have a lot of tools in our, our, um, in our bag vis-a-vis -vis development and vis-a-vis -vis the way a business we can interact with these businesses i felt that we were um you know i think we could have gone a step further with cumberland farms i felt very comfortable at the end of the day that we had done as much as we could with them um and i was really glad for their willingness to work with us i have not felt that way in recent projects i have not felt that that recent projects have been willing to work with us or straightforward or any of that. So this as a tool might be very helpful. And to Tolly's point, it doesn't necessarily make us anti-business. It just makes us a partner. Um, and a business that's willing to be a partner with us, we ha. I mean, Pell Windows, I say, come on in. You know, I I'm all in with them. And that makes us more partners, Vesh. Like, have we had issues there? Yes, but we're still partners with them. We're willing to work with them and work with their, their issues. Same with Yankee Candle. So 
I, I, I am, you know, I'm a little soft on the whole idea of giving us another tool to work with relative to um, how we can ask something, how we as a, a volunteer board, you're, you're talking level of bureaucracy. I do not feel like a bureaucrat, frankly. I feel like somebody who just barely makes it to a Monday night meeting with a little bit of history on how things go and a real strong you know, dedication to making sure that your field develops, yes, but with a plan. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I hear Trevor's point and, um, and I hear your point as well, but I, I don't think that this is necessarily, let, I'm, I'm gonna take away the, the level of bureaucracy language and saying this is a tool that potentially the planning board would have in its, in its, in its toolbox to be able to uh, manage what sometimes feels like a real steamroller. Um, and so that's my point. Thank you. Thanks. Lily, hi, can you introduce yourself? And, uh... Hi, Lily Dwight, South Mill River Road. I just wanted to make the point that uh, one of the things that was revealed to us in the process of working on this is that we do not have a definition for something for which we have a bylaw right now. So we are very vulnerable. And this is a vulnerability that should be addressed. And I personally think that this bylaw is an excellent way to do it because it creates an environment that, as folks have said, that encourages businesses that want to work with the town and want to enhance our care. Really, can you speak up louder? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it, mostly my point is that we don't have a definition right now. We need a definition. This bylaw provides a definition. We have a vulnerability without the definition because if McDonald's wanted to come in today, they could say that you don't have a definition and do what they want or we go through whatever the hell we're gonna go through. That's my point, thank you. And at, just to, cause I get to talk because I, I'm on the board here. So and Denise, Denise also has something right, after, after you, Rachel. You go after me? So here's my point. Look, here I am. What, 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 um, no. The, the, the business of um, creating a nice Dunkin' Donuts that takes a year. This is just back to, to the point that Casey made that Haydenville took a year to get this nice Dunkin' Donuts. Is, is that's killer. Like that's a just waste of time to me. Um, and I, I think if there's a tool by which we can not waste that kind of time, I'm in. Thank you, Denise. Okay. I, I, I totally agree with Rachel. I, I think that this is a very useful tool maybe. And I think it looks like there's a lot of time and effort put into it. And you know, I want businesses that come into town who play well with others. And I'll tell you, that's one of the reasons why I ran for planning board is that I have seen that I've lived that. You know, once again, I don't know if you read my little spiel when I was running, but I grew up in the Poconos in Pennsylvania. And I'll tell you, there is no way I would ever move back there. Talk, there's no master plan. There's no planning at all. And it's one horrible strip mall. It's absolutely horrible. It's depressing. And, you know, I can see that if we don't use the tools that we have, if we don't plan, we could end up the same way. And it's, I don't want to be a, you know, a Route 9 in Hadley. And I don't think any of us want that. And I don't think a lot of us, we didn't move here 30 years ago so we could have you know, a strip mall going up five and 10. So, you know, Trevor, I understand. I mean, I agree with John, economic development, there is economic development, there's economic development. It's not all the same. So I think we really have to be a little careful. And I think that we should you know, appreciate that, that people are bringing forth some useful tools for us to take a look at. I agree with oh. that. I just, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I just wanted this. Um, I just, um, I'm not uh, against um, having some tools in your toolkit for doing this, but I wanna make sure this is not regressive and it's not um, slowing down and I'll use economic development. This town needs money, period. I mean, it needs money from, and we get it. We'll look anywhere to get dollars into the coffers because we are really, you know, we're going to be hurting. <laughs> this next year is going to be brutal for us. Um, if you really look at the finances of what's happening in town, um, 
it's going to be, and what we're going to get from the state in the next couple of years, it's going to be scary. Um, and I think, so I, I get that we need to, um, I, I agree with you. We need a, we need a master plan. We need to plan out how we're going to do this. I just don't want all of this to fall on a, a short bylaw that says we're not business friendly. We're going to, you know, you got to change, you know, three things in your, you know, you've got to change three of your six things that you've worked so hard for all these years. Um, and, and that we're going to limit, you know, what you can do in town just based on one bylaw. I'd rather a, a larger master plan or a larger look at how we want to bring in business to the town and how we want to develop certain parcels going up five and 10. Um, Cause I agree with you. I mean, I, I care about the, the, the beauty of the town and the character of it. And um, I'm not holistically against it. I'm just against a, you know, um, here, we're going to throw this in and we'll be able to stop any, any other development from coming in. I think there needs to be a little bit more thought on what kind of business do we, do we want to attract? Is it just that we want to change? I mean, what, just changing three items out of somebody's six things doesn't still mean that it's a business that we want in town. Um, we want to think about how we want to develop and what kind of businesses we want to bring here. Um, and hopefully ones that produce a lot of jobs and, and tax base and people coming into our stores and buying subs, you know, and pizzas and, you know, different things that kind of develop all of our other small, small businesses. Um, I'm just, I'm just concerned about it. Um, Good. the way Thanks. it looks. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, so this is just, we, we need to get to a, a public hearing, I think. And so I just, um, I think there's enough of us in favor of moving this forward. And I do want to, I did recall during this discussion that what we talked about 10 years ago wasn't so much, this one is about how to be pro, um, pro local business was one of the things that we tried to develop some sort of, bylaws and some advantages for, for um, locally owned businesses. So I, I kind of like what Trevor said is let's, you know, it might not just be just a one thing, but let's look at what type of businesses do we want. And I think we all agree local businesses are more likely to want to fit into the, the environment and do the things that we're asking them to do. They create jobs. They stay here also um, instead of coming and going. So that that's something that maybe some of us could uh, work on too. Are there some advantages um, uh, to, to give to, to local businesses to come up and down five and 10 if there's some of these properties that are becoming available now? So Denise, you want to work on that? Um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I just wanted to say, and you know, um, forgive me if, if I don't know this, but when was the last time we actually had a visioning process in town? You know, have we had, you know, I, I, I could see having small focus groups of, of, you know, various people, of course, run by someone who is, doesn't have any vested interest in it. And to really understand, I mean, talk, you know, talk to the kids, hey, what do you want? Talk to talk to seniors, what do you want? And to really understand what's important to various groups of individuals so that we can have a better idea. So that, you know, we could put that along with the tool and, you know, the tools that were, you know, before us and, and really make a, some better decisions. So I will, I will say that it's been quite a long time and too long for, uh, for an actual master plan. I think it, I participated in it way early on so it could have been 15 16 years ago and and um, years i'm ago. a little i'm a little embarrassed to say this but it's the it's the planning board who i think is in charge of actually not having to do the whole thing but maybe to get it going along with the select board and, and i've been chair for a long time so i take responsibility for that um because i know we've been so bored otherwise rachel that uh, <laughs> <laughs> We should have been doing that. We had nothing but else to do. We, we have had some, um, you know, we had some a couple different like complete street kind of plans for South Deerfield for the downtown, mm -hmm. which I would think have been very helpful. And, the, and then the latest one that Chris was involved with, with the climate and everything. But it might be something that the select board and the planning board do put on our agenda for the next kind of 12 months or something. And look at when could we kind of look at that grander scheme because the South Deerfield is downtown, but there's also Route 5 and 10 and 116 and some of our other, uh, you know, byways that we need to look at better. So good point. But having said that, I would like to see if the planning board would like to move um, this um, proposal forward to schedule a public hearing. And then the question is uh, when, and I would propose that this happen uh, after um, the October 
town meeting and maybe into November, December. Understood. <laughs> Planning board, any uh, reaction? Yeah. Um, normally we try to, in a regular time, we try to, we meet every, we usually meet the first Monday of every month. Sometimes we have a couple quick ANRs or something, and then we try to do a public hearing. Um, so, you know, October is full. Um, November, early November is full. So maybe we're looking at December 7th, um, which would be our, wow. our, uh, our December planning board meeting. Any takers I on that move, one? I move uh, that we consider uh, that we may open a plan public hearing on December 7th at seven o'clock um, to discuss a proposed um, bylaw change brought forward by um, any individual. Is it an individual or for responsible development? So it's the whole group. Uh, did you feel um, for responsible citizens for responsible development? Your field for re de responsible development. Your field for responsible development. All right. Group. Um, and again, it, there's no constituent. There's no. Uh, it's an open hearing. It would be listed in the paper and on the website and everything, but no, there's no um, butters to notify. No. Um. All right, do we have a second? I second the motion. And at least seconds that. Any discussion? Um, that was Rachel Blaine, by the way. That was Rachel who did the motion. So in the discussion, I would ask, um, is there, it's, it's a, um, it's, the proposed change is a footnote, is it? Or is this an actual... Two things. One would be inserting a definition. Okay. And okay. then the, the footnote. Okay. Because that's, it, I just want to make sure it's something people can get their head around and figure out what it is we're proposing here. Um, so, um, all right. So I guess in the meantime, I would, I would just sort of say that maybe um, the proponents could also kind of help with a, uh, you know, a summary, one or two paragraphs couple of the things that you that we all talked about tonight that you could help to publicize it a little bit more because sometimes the language in these things isn't that clear to your average resident so um. yeah Debbie that's Debbie Schreiber again just to say that the um, the items that are in bold on the copies that you may have um, are actually descriptions that Jeff Lacey wrote just to aid of uh, readers of the proposed um, bylaw additions. So that's, you'll see that at the bottom of the uh, definition of the formula based business and you'll see it uh, bold uh, things that are bracketed, bold notes that are bracketed also on the um, yeah. right. other draft articles. Those are just aids for understanding. They're not uh, an actual part of the, of the of the whole bylaw, but we yeah. can certainly also develop more, more, more robust materials than that. But just, yeah. just wanted to clarify that for folks on Excellent. the board. That's helpful. All right, we have motion in a second. Um, so all those in favor of uh, holding a public hearing on December 7th at seven o'clock for these proposed bylaw changes. Uh, who seconded that? I'm sorry. Uh, Anna Lee. Okay. Um, all right, so all those in favor, uh, Anne Mary. Uh, in favor, yes. Denise? Yes. Rachel? Rachel Blaine, yes. Annalie? Annalie Wolfcool, yes. Max? Uh, Max Andes, no. John Waite, yes. That's uh, five, five, one. Scratching my head. Um, okay. <laughs> the other um, the other quick comment I, I have is that our our lack of definitions uh, in our current bylaws could could be an issue. But I think um, fast food and drive-through restaurants not allowed. I 
I think that's pretty solid. Um, it, it's fast food. You could have a lot of arguments, but about drive through, I think is pretty clear. So I'm not sure if the lack of definition. So I, I just don't want to, I'm not sure that's a thing that we need to put out to the public that we all should get nervous um, that a McDonald's might move in. I just want to kind of put that out there. I, I think that's, it's pretty good, but I could be challenged. So. Can I say something? Yes, please. Sorry, Casey, I can't. <laughs> um, coming from Amherst from my previous job and working with all new development that came into the town of Amherst and small business owners versus big um, business owners and trying to work that and, and make it, make people feel like they were able to do business in a town was something that was so important. And so I worked on it so much with people and making something that's really um, challenging and difficult depending on the zone and the location and requirements will really, in my experience, push everybody away. And wanting to build a town that's welcoming and it needs to be a really, really, really thoughtful process. And the mm. way to write in a bylaw has to be um, flexible or with conditions like it just needs to be a process that's really really thought out mm -hmm. and not just you're gonna do what this one town has done you know talking to a lot of other communities that have the same size same demographics and same type of business structure um is something that is really important and it and it takes a in my opinion a much longer town time mm -hmm. yeah. uh, to, to develop and I just, I, I urge caution and, um, and, and the, the fact that you don't have to, you don't make these steps that you have to keep coming back to change. Yeah. So anyway. So I, thank you, Jennifer. I think that if, if I read you right, it, it, the sort of the master plan, the bigger plan is more important almost. Um, it's very and, important. Yeah. It, it's long term. It's longevity. It's yeah. success in a community. Yeah. It's um, it's it's multi levels. Yeah. I, mean, uh, I helped. I was a permit administrator for the town of Amherst for five years. So basically, it was my job to guide uh, residents through the process of any any business, restaurant, yeah. retail, building a house, putting up a fence. You name it. Like they had to come and see me. Um, and, and huh. helping and shepherding them to have a successful business that's not going to close and leave an empty spot. Yeah. Um, making also conditions with, that, with any special permit that had to have, being very thoughtful about those conditions and how they're going to follow out 10, 20, 30 years from now and not yeah. just thing today in, yeah. in economic background. Um, I just think it's, a, it's a, a lot more discussion in my yeah. opinion. Thanks, sorry. No, good opinion. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on, but um, Debbie, you have something quick? Yep. I'm sorry, just really quickly. We've spent about two years working on this and developing it. Um, I, I recognize that. And the, the only other comment I'd make is that, yes, planning is absolutely necessary, and that's a good thing. But uh, there, there are some things that need to have – you also need bylaws. You need to have things that help to substantiate those. And uh, that because the, a plan by in and of itself doesn't really has has no teeth. Right. So. But I, I guess just on that note, and I think I, what I hear some people saying is, if some people might read this as anti mm -hmm. business, and and I think at the same time, if we had some other things that showed pro business and and what types of business, you know, being a little more um, balanced in that regard would be helpful to have them all coming at the same time. Agreed. So. Um, Something that, something that I think we need to work on. So. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, I didn't ask you guys, but I'm assuming at least some of you can be available on December 7th to, uh, as proponents to help present that. Debbie, Judy, Tolly, yeah? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm uh, I, we didn't ask you, but uh, hopefully some of you can be available on December 7th. To oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sorry. Yes. All um, right. Yes. Thank you. All right, another new business. Um, Merrigan Way layout review and possible A&R for Oxford property. 
Casey or Trevor, or who's, who's, so, who's going to tell us more about this? I will give you my short, hopefully, presentation. All right, I'm going to try sharing my screen for Brock. We, we did get a map sent to us earlier. I know that. Um, yeah, you did. I was just going to go over it real quick. Yeah. Okay, so first part is the road layout. So the select board held a road layout hearing on the 9th at 615 and they approved the layout that you're seeing. This layout adds 50 feet right here to the edge of Merrigan Way. Um, and that's to, it's for purposes of access, utilities and frontage. And effects. I, I just ahead, missed John. that, Casey, you put your cursor up there. I just missed where you were at again. Okay. Okay, so this is Merrigan Way. Yeah. This is the area we would be adding. This okay. right here. R1, okay. parcel R1. I got some very good feedback from Annalie this, this morning or this afternoon. So I wrote everything down. Um, so parcel R1 does that, it does extend by 50 feet. Um, the layout also identifies, if you look at my cursor, I'm moving over to this section. This is a sewer easement that was not identified in the last plan that we submitted to town meeting. So this needed to be corrected. Um, it also, the entire additional 50 feet of frontage um, not only helps the town with the road, but it also helps parcel C be made whole, so to speak. And I walked into this, so bear with me. Um, they didn't actually have enough frontage. So this actually makes that parcel whole in terms of our zoning bylaws. Um, let's see. So zoning bylaw chapter 197 section 5A4 provides that the planning board review all road layouts prior to approval to town meeting. Now that the select board has approved this layout, we're submitting it to you all. And the select board would like to move forward because this has another effect and I'll get to that in a second. Um, because the layout is key to the economic development of parcel 21, which is this parcel here, and this area, which is 22, uh, we've submitted an ANR, and that's to split off this area in 22, which is 0.924 acres. acres from the larger Oxford. And I say this in quotes because those of us that have been, that had worked in town for quite a while referred to this entire 22 and 21 as the Oxford pickle property. Not everybody knows that. We refer to it as Oxford for that reason. The Does town the actually took the property on. Pardon? Because some of us worked at Oxford when it was a pickle shop. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the town actually took parcel 21, which was that we would propose to split into 21 and 22 from Oxford when they closed their business and moved with the intent to develop that area. And so we had over a period of time, the town had pursued that. Um, but with changes in the economic structure of the person, the group that had purchased that property, the town purchased it back. And in order to move forward with another sale, which has to go through the procurement process, we needed to identify some of these adjacent features so that it, we could clearly create an RFQ um, to move forward with that sale. So that ANR plan, this ANR delineation shows that. Oh, hold on. Let me show you the notes. And here's the notes. <laughs> Jen and I were fiddling with this the, earlier before the meeting started. So the notes do show that the plan has been prepared to combine parcel R1, which is that 50 feet, with Merrigan Way and create the sewer easement in parcel 21. And then parcel 22 is not a building lot. Um, the parcel will be conveyed by the town through a procurement process, which would, which would be separate from parcel 21's conveyance. And the intent with 
two, two, hold on. This parcel, so this parcel, the reason it was delineated is um, there's a business owner that has deliveries that come down Coates Ave, so here, that needs some space to turn around because once parcel two one is sold, mm. there's no through way, which is the exit that's happening now. There's no through way to go from here to Merrigan way. So without a turnaround, any of those tractor trailers have to back down Coates Avenue, which we see as a bigger public safety issue um, than it needs to be. Cause not everybody's been out to uh, the Oxford property, but right now Coates Ave, you can actually drive through to one to get to Merrigan way. So if we sell this parcel and there's no way for these trucks to turn around, they're going to be backing down Coates Ave, which is a public safety issue. And I think the neighbors will probably have an issue with it too. So this was our solution. Sounds lovely. My, I have a, a question by taking out two one, a uh, two two, by separating it. Mm -hmm. Does two does two one become less valuable because it's then it's um, it, it it loses Coates Ave egress. It so it does. The thing about extending Merrigan Way should make that less of an issue. Um, hold on, let me just share my screen again. Uh, because Merrigan Way has more footage here, it shouldn't be as much of an issue. Um, and that was a discussion that the board had. When we talked to the surveyor and to town council, they, it, neither one of them saw that as a significant loss because we were, at, we were creating this space here. So the actual, the additional frontage gives more of an ability to use that middle parcel to one to advantage. They would never, I mean, we, we don't really want people using Coats Ave for trucks and stuff anyway, I guess, but um, I, I just- Not if we can help it, but there's an existing business owner over here right. that, that needs access for deliveries. Sure. So that it, it's a conundrum because this isn't, like if you look, you can see that we've actually delineated Blacksmith Brook over here as well. So you can see, the features of the property better, but to deal with this delivery issue and with how we're going to better utilize Merrigan Way, this was our the best solution we could come up with considering the property. I just I just want to go back to um, many years ago, early days when this was potentially a very attractive property for businesses. Is that we wanted businesses to locate here and then and kind of connect them to downtown. For example, their their employees could walk to you know Leo's or something and and the Wolfies. Um, and now it seems like with the Merrigan Way being out there, which not all of us agreed should have happened, but it did. Um, we're, this whole this whole area now is becoming not connected to downtown, and now you're taking away the one access point that people could at least you know connect to the downtown. So is there is there any? Is well, there my more? issue with Coach Law is not exactly the safest road to walk down. It's actually safer to go down Sugarloaf Street this way. But There's actual sidewalks. But less likely people will do it. But um... I honestly don't know how that would play out, John, because either way, there's access. There's also access. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. There could have been. If we had extended Merrigan Way further down, we could have had more access this way to South Main. Uh, but but it, the one thing that you want to be sure that you're keeping in mind is that if you don't have adequate width in your roads, it's going to be difficult for people to walk down those streets. I, I experience this every time I walk my dog because Route 9 is not wide enough. So I walk my dog on 112. I live less than a quarter of a mile from the intersection of 112 and Route 9. And whether you're riding a bicycle or walking your dog, Route 9 is not safe. And it, it's just because there's not enough space. And one thing that, 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 that we that, tried that, to that, do with Merrigan was create that accessibility through Sugarloaf Street. Because it isn't really that far. Now I walk, so I have to say that uh, I don't necessarily I, uh, that and I'm just, 
I'm just bringing up something that at Complete Streets and other planning, you know, the reason why we have our meetings and plan is because it's come up, people come up with good ideas. And there was always yeah. discussion about linking this both at, at least uh, pedestrian wise to downtown. And so now we're doing something opposite of what we've talked about through a lot of our planning exercises. So I just want to make that uh, observation. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wonder why the town and, and Trevor has his hand raised. I can't see everybody. What happened? Oh, I get. It. I know what happened. Okay. Oh, let me unshare. Um, okay, I'm so open for sharing. Ah. There you go. I just want to make sure. That, so this is a, a planning board thing. Are you going to clarify something, Trevor? Or okay, thanks. And we can't hear you. So. Muted. We can't hear you. No, it says that you're unmuted, but nothing again. There no, you go. No, now we can hear you. Oh, you can. Okay, yeah. my laptop's having trouble. Um, yes, the the idea was to, um, you know, I think there still could be a pedestrian walkway out of. I mean, it really depends on how that property gets developed, the larger one, and we really wanted to save that smaller section for a turnabout because of the truck traffic going down there. If we if we did sell the larger process property we wouldn't have you know we'd, like like Casey said we'd have trucks backing out but I don't see why we couldn't work with that whoever purchases that property to you know in, encourage a pedestrian pathway for you know either across that property depending on how it gets built or what what people put in there um, to have people have access to downtown to go and you know purchase lunch and come back I know pilot they, they all shoot down and grab lunch and they really enjoy that so I think there's a way that we could make pedestrian you know, traffic there, but just kind of slow down the, not, not do, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of car traffic there. We'd love it to, you know, the car traffic to come in off of Merrigan, but, um, and there is that other access out to South Maine. Um, but, you know, that, that takes a culvert over the bridge and there's a lot of work there. There was, you know, some interest in that property late last year that they were talking that they would rather have access you know, right off 91 down South Main and into that development. Um, that's something that we'd have to think about. It really depends on what they're purchasing and what they're doing. We'd rather the trucks not coming through the center of town. You know, I mean, the bigger trucks to come in, they've got to come either down Sugarloaf or in through the center of town. It's all really tight there. So if we could have access to that, but it really is up to the pe people who purchase it and could they get, you know, conservation and all that worked out to get some access there. Um, so I'll just leave it there. But but I agree with you, John. It makes sense to have pedestrian path passage to the center of town. And, and I just reemphasize that, that part of the reason why the town took ownership of this property is so the town had some say in the matter. So yep. to say, oh, yep. it's up to the private person, that's not true. Right now, the town still owns it. So let's the town well, we, we drive do. the ship. Yeah, we, and own that smaller yeah. section, correct. Yes, and we could still retain that, and we could put in the we could put in the uh, access. You know, if we wanted to spend the money, we could put in a turnabout and pedestrian access there, and then it's up to the rest of the you know whatever that two one wants to do with the property. That that's up to them. But you're right; it makes sense to to look at that. And and I know that you know, local businesses we want to support them because we're very pro business, um, mm -hmm. and so it's not to take away them, but let's try to make it work for everybody. No, I agree with that. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Because I, I might get a call from the business owner tomorrow, so I have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Any other questions from planning board members? So our our, um, our uh, question in front of us is to um, endorse this A and R. I believe is that right, Casey? I think yeah. this is a great opportunity. Um, Denise, you, you want to make a motion to endorse the ANR? Because I could go right ahead, but, you know. <laughs> you, you move a lot of things. Okay, I make a motion to endorse the ANR for this particular item. We, we endorse ANRs. We don't actually. Yeah. 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 And there's a reason why we endorse, I forget exactly, but it's, um, anyway, that's what we do. Okay. 
I, I second. I second. This is Rachel Blaine. I second Denise Mason's motion to endorse the ANR before us about uh, on American. Thank you. Any any discussion? My uh, my discussion is that the um, name of the applicant is Town of Deerfield, um, uh, care of Casey <laughs> Casey Warren, and I see in section section five our applicant didn't, didn't fill out anything on the ANR, and we really appreciate it when they describe what the project is. So we would like to note picking... that in our ANR endorsement that uh, you know for in future applications. <laughs> Future applications, put Trevor's name instead of your name, Casey, so he gets in trouble. Um, so <laughs> they make people like me sign these things. <laughs> so you did, ex I think you do have a note on the actual map, but it, it would be great to put a sentence, because um, you're doing two, we're doing two things. We're, uh, we're, we're creating that parcel oh, wow. R, R1, and we're doing the SOAR easement, right? Yes. And we're doing yeah. the, and we're doing the parcel two two separation. So, if you could just just have those three bullets there, that'd be great. Okay. Um, any other comments? All those in favor? Um, uh, let me go around here. Um, Ann Mary. Ann Mary Cloutier, yes. Anna Lee. Anna Lee Wolf Cool, yes. Denise. Denise Mason, yes. Rachel. Rachel Blaine, yes. Max. Max, I don't see him on our screen anymore. John Waite, yes. So we've got five yeses, zero noes, zero abstentions. So normally, um, I don't know if we've, we must have had some ARs since COVID, but so usually we sign these things. So how are we doing that now, Casey? We haven't had enough. Um, what we can do is tomorrow I can leave it out for you. We can leave it in the foyer for you all to sign. Which by the way, now that I have a moment, I want to give a great shout out to Jen. She just disappeared. No, she moved. She's there. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. There she, she moved. But she, did, she, she created our, um, a stormwater, ugh, God, she's a goddess. So we finally are clearing the deck tomorrow. I'll come in, I'll go in and sign this. John, you don't have to. Thank uh, you. Uh, but you can. Good with that. John should. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Sue, John. Sue. Well, then Sue is a goddess. Both yeah, of you are goddesses. Both of you. Goddesses, and they wrote the stormwater decision and God bless them. Nobody is happier than Tony, um, but really we appreciate it so much. Thank you. So that will be out there and the ANR will be out there. And so was Annalie, Denise, and Mary, can you get down to the town hall in the next couple of days? Yes. Yep. All right. I don't Thank go down you. there that often, but uh, I'll, I'll try to go down. I have to come get my dump sticker, so maybe I'll come down. Okay. <laughs> you can get it at the dump. I had no, to go I, because I got a marriage license for my daughter, everybody. I, I have a son-in-law. Yay! Ah, COVID wedding. Congratulations. Uh, all right. Um, last item on new business, although I have one other thing that I should have done on the public comment. I'm sorry. But um, so we need to, um, so this goes back two years, but on December 10th, 2018, we denied a site plan review to uh, uh, South Deerfield DG series. The DG, I believe, mean, uh, is short for Dollar General. Um, since then, they appealed it, and it, there was a lot of talk, and then there was a meeting or two. And we had an executive session, actually, the planning board. This is mostly information for Denise, Anna Lee, and I, even even and Mary, I guess, wasn't part of this, but um, I was part of this. You were that was you yeah. would just come you would I'm come on. Yeah, that's, all like, right, good. Um, it seems it was like two years ago. It's like um, so, and, and the uh, question was that was our site plan denial? You know, they were challenging that, and so they we agreed be, uh, on the advice of our attorney to 
to say that they could come back and have another uh, review of their site plan. And um, so they call it this remand order. And so they got a judge to sign this. So I think I sent it around to everybody. And then I also sent around clarification about whose names were on it. And so our attorney said that all current planning board members should participate. It's kind of starting new again, so that it doesn't matter if you miss the old meetings. And the people who are not on the planning board, whose names are on the uh, on the document, don't have to worry about it. They were only there because they were members of the planning board. So, um, and we had a certain number of days, I think 60 days since uh, we received that notice to hold a public hearing. So we'd like to set that date. And then also our attorney would like to review since it's been two years since we kind of got into this and because some of, some of you are new, like to update us on it. So, um, so the first thing is to set this date for the remand order and then set the date for the um, session with our attorney. And through the emails, it sounds like October 5th will work. And I suggested we do that one at six o'clock because it could be a long, could be a long night. Does that work for everybody? What was the date again? Say it again. October 5th. That gives us the plenty of two weeks, more than two weeks to get the, the public notice up and out and everything. All right, so I, um, John, I moved. Sorry, what's the date for your meeting with the attorney? We haven't, I'm gonna get to that one next. Oh, sorry. sorry. On the 5th? Excuse me? The time on the 5th would be 6 p.m.? I'm suggesting 6, does that work for people? Sure. I suspect it's gonna be a longer night. Is anything else going on that night, Casey, or? Yeah. I don't, uh, Jennifer and I, that's why we wanted to sit in on this part of your conversation. I think that's clear. That's for the remand hearing, right? That's for the public hearing. Yeah. That's okay. why I was hoping that. Okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So I move that we uh, schedule a public hearing for the remand order from Land Court in South Deerfield DG Series LLC proceedings for October 5th at 6 o'clock via uh, Zoom. Do we have a second? I second it. Ooh, Ann Mary got in there before. Yeah, good. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Anna Lee? Uh, Anna Lee Wolfgold, yes. Denise? Denise Mason, yes. Rachel? Rachel Blaine, yes. Ann Mary? And Mary Cloutier, yes. Max is not back. John Waite, yes. Uh, that's five zero zero. So that's the public hearing. Then, in order in, in advance of that, we want to meet with our attorney. Um, so there was a suggestion about that. Oh, I forget when that suggestion was. Who's got that? Does anybody have the calendar that I sent out to people in front of them? Probably, let me check my email. The 21st, no, 28th. 28th, I thought. 28th. Of October? September. September. I have uh, September 21st is what I sent out to people. Oh, because you're going to be gone the 28th. Yes, 21st. No, 28th is um, Rosh Hashanah. Um, Rosh Hashanah. Or Yom Kippur, or one or the other. Sorry. <laughs> you're very observant. Only... You're very observant there. I got them all covered. I just you didn't are, have them. You <laughs> are definitely uh, raised Catholic, married to Jim. But, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for considering that, John. Yeah. So, um, I, I heard back from most people, so I'm, I'm assuming the yes, 21st. Yes, you, you did. You did the 21st. Now that I've got, right. it, I've got it here. So, um, okay, we don't need a motion for that. That's, just a, that's just a meeting. That's 7 o'clock. And that is, um, so, Casey or Jennifer, remind me, it, it's just a regular planning board meeting, and then we go into executive session. Is that what we do? Correct. You have to start an, ex you have to start an open meeting move to executive session, and then have your conversation in executive session as so part of litigation planning. So that strategy. just has to be, that has to be posted just like 48 hours. So we, if, 
if you could post that the Thursday before right. or something. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Casey. Yep. The, the 21st, we do have another meeting, so we both have to. to right. see you. Yeah. So we'll both be working that night. You can do that. We said seven o'clock. That's okay. Okay. That's what I need to know because I need to be involved in your meeting, which means I can only meet with the personnel board for an hour because mm -hmm. it's, it's executive session and lit um, strategy for litigation. So I need to be in your meeting, John. So does that work for yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll just let them know. And you have two, you have two uh, zoom accounts. The town does or something. Or? We do. We're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> we were rich with Zoom accounts, just not dollars. But Zoom accounts were rough. I know. Can we have dollars to go with those Zoom accounts? <laughs> and then I just wanted people to put on their calendar that um, there's a good chance that on October 26th, we might need to issue a decision because um depends on what happens at the at the public hearing. We only have so many days to actually do a decision. Yes, um, <clears throat> to make a my, decision within 60 days, right? Yeah, but my question to, and I'll ask Adam this, is it, I think it says at the close of the, at the close of the public hearing, you have so many days, but if we continue the public hearing, are, are we allowed to continue the public hearing, I guess is one of my questions. That's going to be a question we should ask Adam yeah. Yeah. next week. Because given the... Um, and if there are questions, write them down so we don't forget because it, it helps facilitate the conversation yeah um you know given given the history with this project um the public hearings a lot of questions are raised during the public hearing so you you can't close it you have to continue it and i just want to put that out there so all right so that's that's the plan um and that most of this stuff again you can't you know, kind of talk too much about in, in between meetings. That's why we want to kind of do it all at that executive session on the on the twenty first. So the more of you that can attend, the better, because every we want everybody to be prepared. Yeah. Which maybe I could take this opportunity. Has anybody heard from um, Paul Alice in the past couple months? I get no response from him, and I he used to be fairly responsive. Um, Nobody's heard from him. All right, I I probably could find his phone number. I'll I'll give him a call because he was you know quite involved in this. Um, all right. The other quick thing I have for the agenda that I should have said at the beginning. I don't know if people noticed it was uh, uh, I forget his name Leon. I think he he tuned in at the beginning of this meeting, but at the ZBA the other night. Arkowski. What's his name? Yeah. Kowski. So at the the ZBA the other day um, had a I think it was a public hearing about uh, this, this gentleman Leon who wanted to have an accessory apartment and he went to the ZBA to get a special permit and they didn't seem it, it, it from his point of view it seemed like they weren't going to approve it so he actually withdrew his his um, application so he would be withdrawn without prejudice which means he can come back I think anytime he wants. Whereas if they had voted no, he would have had to wait two years, I believe, or something. Yeah. So, um, so, and and as part of that, I spoke up and I said that that the planning board has this on our docket, but we haven't got to it yet. Is that we want to change the accessory apartment bylaw that we have, which is right now fairly restrictive, and we've been talking about it for a couple of years to make it much more, I think, uh, flexible uh, to be not only uh, relatives but right now it says you have to have a like a elderly relative or something it's very restricted but I think we wanted to make it more more uh, flexible but we haven't got to it yet um, and it kind of penalized this guy who was trying to do the right thing I think um, so I just hoping that we could so actually I talked to him today He's, he called the town and someone sent him to me and I talked to him and I, I made no promises but I said that I, we would like to get this at least by next spring Onto the town meeting, um, and so let's just make sure we get that on our agenda for <laughs> December, January. And I think I we really want to get our our town um, building inspector involved. There's it, it been a lot of things written; we just have to pull it together. Ding, ding. So, Casey, is that? That's what I was going to say, John. 
yeah. is he's actually made that comment to me and to Jennifer. So okay. we're aware that now that we need to provide that intersect. Good. Do we so, need that? Do we need a consultant to help us shepherd it through them? Because that has been an issue in the past. Well, it depends what Bob, if he, does he, does he know this stuff? Could he help kind of write it and, you know, we probably need a legal thing at some point, but I think we all in general kind of know the direction we want to go. Um, and other towns, you know, a lot of the other towns are doing it too. Greenfield just, Greenfield is really flexible. They said you can have detached, you know, accessory apartments, which I think we were still talking attached here, but maybe we want to change that. I don't know. Um, but ideally we'd have a public hearing maybe in January or February to get feedback from people so that we could then, if we need to make revisions before whatever the spring town meeting would be. Um, Lily would like to say something. On this, on this topic, good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so Lily Dwight, 45 South Mill River Road. I was the chair of Deerfield Senior Housing as we tried so desperately to get yes. everything done. And this was all we could get done. And it is only restrictive and because I'm just gonna be honest, of racism. They they literally said we don't want those people in Holyoke yeah. moving in. Oh. So I just I I'm sort of trying to defend our honor of what, what we were trying to do. But we also then compromised by saying it was the only, and this was the only way we could get it through by giving it that sunset clause, which is now biting Mr. Markowitz yeah. in the year, unfortunately. So, I, I mean, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of background that it is so restrictive because that's yeah. what we could do at the time. And I hope that, um, that enough people's eyes and have opened in their hearts as well. Well, you moved the ball down the field. I mean, that's just yeah. all you did. You, you yeah. just, you know, you, you pushed it further down the road. And I think, yeah, no, but it's not that you restricted it. You just kind of kept, the, kept, kept the game going. Right. Uh, Plus now we can actually say, look, we, we had this and a few people have used it, but so restrictive, it's been a bit challenge, but it's been, and it's enabling people to stay together. So anyway, yeah. I, I just wanted to give you guys- And more importantly, it's going to update it so that people are compliant as opposed to not compliant, because that's the biggest problem right now. Yeah, exactly. So, so if, if that's, is there a way we can do it faster or are we realistic that we just, we'll take it up, you know, in the winter and, but really we have to get it on the town meeting. But let's make it a, a priority yeah. this winter. I think we've just opened a town meeting. <laughs> I mean, op uh, public hearing in December, but I don't. I think we say we're going to shoot for a January town public yeah. hearing. Yeah, good. All right, so I just wanted to get that said so it can be in our minutes tonight and then it can be on, you know, make sure we get it on the agenda. I, that's a good thing to bring up with Paul because that was one of the things in our town um, inventory. Our, um, we have a very low inventory of low income um, and we're actually, you know, to really threaten people, we're actually open to uh, predatory or whatever it is, development. So this is a great way for everybody to move forward for a lot of different reasons. Yep. All right, we've come to the other uh, business, not reasonably anticipated 48 hours. Anybody have anything? It's 920, by the way. Um, the self is lost. No way. Because I wasn't watching them. Always have. Um, so our, we set a date for actually our next meeting is um, December 21st and October 5th. We already have two, two set. So we're good there. Excellent. Anything else? Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks for sticking with us, Casey. I move that we adjourn. Thank you. Second? Rachel Blaine moves that we adjourn. Second that. Denise Mason. Second, Denise, all those in favor, raise your hand. Oh, I yeah. can see you, Five zero zero. Excellent.